Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the December 2021 virtual field trip to Euclid Creek Reservation. My name is Michelle Brocious. I am your bird walk leader this evening. I am a Western Cuyahoga Audubon board member and field trip co-coordinator for the organization. All right, well, actually, before I get started about Euclid Creek, um, just a, a little note about this program for those of you who may not have attended before. Every month I select a location for participants to go and visit individually or with a friend or family member. And then I ask that, um, that those people give to me something of that experience, usually a bird list, a journaling, a photography. I did receive a poem once, but you know, just a submitted item to me that I put into this presentation and share on a call this evening. And you don't have to have gone out to the reservation to attend this call. This is just me sharing everyone's experiences and then we will have discussion at the end. All right, so about Euclid Creek Reservation. Uh, Euclid Creek Reservation includes a northern and southern section along its namesake, Euclid Creek. The southern section, which stretches from Cory Picnic Area to Highland Picnic Area, offers two and a half miles of all-purpose trail called the Physical Fitness Trail, from which beautiful views of the creek and the area's geology can be enjoyed. Euclid Creek has formed a valley over the last 14,000 years as it slowly cuts down through layers of rock. From the Welsh Woods Picnic Area, <clears throat> excuse me, which is about halfway between Highland and Quarry, you can see a massive shale cliff that is 360 million years old, a relic formed by the sediment of ancient seas. In 2013, Cleveland Metro Parks entered into a lease agreement with the city of Cleveland to manage and enhance certain lakefront properties for the next 99 years. These properties include Euclid Beach Park, Villa Angela Park, and Wildwood Park, which have become the northern section of Euclid Creek Reservation. And for more information, please visit the Cleveland Metro Parks website, Euclid Creek Reservation webpage. And then I included a picture on the left of uh, Euclid Creek Reservation. And then right here is that um, 360 million year old cliff I was mentioning earlier. Hmm. All right, so I always identify a target species or two, uh, just a bird for people to keep a lookout when they um, go on these virtual field trips. So the first one is the belted kingfisher. With its top heavy physique, energetic flight, and piercing rattle, the belted kingfisher seems to have an air of self-importance as it patrols up and down rivers and shorelines. It nests and burrows along earthen banks and feeds almost entirely on aquatic prey, diving to catch fish and crayfish with its heavy straight bill. These ragged crested birds are a powdery blue gray. Males have one blue band across the white breast while females have a blue and a chestnut band. That is the description taken from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology website, Belted Kingfisher page. And there on the right hand side is a Belted Kingfisher that I took uh, during my visit to Euclid Creek Reservation. Excuse me one second. All right, the next target species, well, I asked uh, folks to look for mergansers, but the red-breasted merganser was the only one that was spotted by most people that went out. So I'm being more specific here and just discussing the red-breasted merganser. So the red-breasted merganser is a shaggy-headed diving duck, also known as the sawbill, named for its thin bill with tiny serrations on it that is that it uses to keep hold of slippery fish. It breeds in the boreal forests on freshwater and saltwater wetlands. Males are decked out with a dark green shaggy head, a red bill and eye, and a rusty chest. Females lack the male's bright colors, but also don the same messy dew. It parades around coastal waters and large inland lakes in the United States and Mexico in the winter. And that's from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology Red-Breasted Merganser page. And um, although the Red-Breasted Merganser was sighted by, I think, all but one person that went out, uh, nobody managed to get a photo of it. So I have borrowed a photo from Tom Fishburn. Uh, he visited Coe Lake, um, I think, two years ago and got this picture of a female Red-Breasted Merganser. 
All right, so I'm the first one up here. Um, I saw a total of 19 species on my visit and I visited the reservation two times. All right, so I made my first visit to Euclid Creek Reservation on December 5th with my friend Amy arriving at the Northern Wildwood Park section at around 9 a.m. At first, all there was to see were ringbill gulls. The ringbill gulls develop, the ringbill gull develops brown spots on its brilliant white head for the winter. First and second winter birds have more brown extending down their body. So here are a few pictures of gulls that I took at the reservation. So it seems I also captured the photo of a mystery gall. I first tried to ID this bird myself using multiple field guides, a Kaufman field guide to birds of North America, the Sibley guide to birds second edition, and National Geographic field guide to the birds of North America. All wonderful field guides. All right, so from these field guides, my best ID was a first winter rainbow gull. Rainbow gulls typically have yellow legs, but first winter individuals will have pinkish legs. Also, the black ring on the belt looks thick, almost like a cap, which is a characteristic of a first winter ring build. However, this also looks a lot like a third winter herring gull. <laughs> herring gulls tend to have more of a black ring than a black bill cap in their third winter, but there might be a little bit of pale tip showing in this photo. Uh, you can kind of see in the tip maybe a little bit there. All right, so we have a high number of both ring build and herring along the Lake Erie coast, so I knew I needed some help. So the picture on the left there is the mystery gull with those pale pink legs and that cap on its beak. So I asked Facebook for help. As you can see, two people think it's a ring bill gall. They just disagree on which winter. So I disagree with the first comment as the bird in my photo clearly has pink legs and a second winter ring build will have yellow legs. So as you can see there, the first person, it's a ring build, I think it's second winter. So I, I don't believe that's correct. All right, so I was totally on board with the second comment confirming my thinking that the bird is a first winter ring build. Um, she says, I think it's a first winter rainbow gall. Second winter has yellow legs per Sibley. Third winter herring should have black pushed back from the bill tip, so that's a tip is light colored. A size of bird helps if there were other gulls around, especially a definite herring, this bird should have been clearly much smaller. Um, there were lots of ringbill gulls around and it looked like the same size to me, but I wasn't looking specifically for that when I was on location, so it, it's hard to recall. However, um, I was on board with that comment until a third comment rolled in, which blindsided me, a Thayer's gall. So this person says, not ring build, that bill is much too large and heavy. The pink legs would only work on a first winter ring build and those birds will show pale undersides with a heavy dose of cinnamon brown streaking patterning. The wing coverts would also be a straw cinnamon brown and the primaries would be dark tan rather than black without any white in them. This is not a second winter ring build because those would not retain the pink base bill show yellow legs and have pale eyes. This is a four-year gall, probably in its third cycle, could be a darker eyed herring, but my bet is on theirs. So perplexed, I went running to fellow WCAS board member Nancy Howell for help. <laughs> I decided to clean up a second pose of the mystery gall, hoping this might help in revealing more of the side and tail of the bird in question. So as you can see there, um, it's, it's not looking to the left side anymore. It's, it's looking to the right, so more of its profile. Um, I was hoping that would help. So I sent the two photos to Nancy along with all the comments from Facebook. Uh, Nancy responded that her first impression was a herring gall due to the pink legs, which is completely, you know, understandable. Me as well. That's like a key field mark of a herring around here. Um, Thayer's, she says, Thayer's do have dark eyes, whereas a third winter herring would have a lighter iris. She also mentioned that Thayer's is an Iceland gall that has dark wings and black wing tips, and that an Iceland gall was reported in the 2021 Christmas bird count for our count circle. So there is at least one around. So just a note, Ebru does not have Thayer's in its species list. Iceland should be used, I believe. Uh, Thayer's, however, can be found in both the Kaufman and Sibley field guides. So what do you think about this Gulls ID? I'm inclined to leave Thayer's, but we'll wait to see if more discussion is generated. And I also just joined a North American Gulls Facebook group, so I may pose the question there. So and we can um, 
if, if anyone on the call has knowledge about goals, uh, we can discuss this at the end. That would be exciting. All right, so after spending some time with the gulls, I noticed something different floating in the water, a horned grebe. I was very excited to finally see something other than a gull, and it made me hopeful for a merganser. Uh, I'm not hating on gulls, but there are a lot of them. <laughs> so we then made our way through Villa Angela Park, a forested section of the area where we saw many squirrels and not many birds. The trail we took through Villa Angela Park emptied us out onto Villa Angela Beach, where we had amazing luck. We admired three buffalo heads bobbing around in the lake, and then out of nowhere, at least 500 red-breasted dancers streamed westward across the lake. Uh, just as we were enjoying all the life the lake had to offer, we stumbled upon death. An unfortunate gall had become entangled in fishing gear. It is not exactly known how many aquatic birds succumb to cast off fishing gear. I searched for a statistic to share, but the impression is the number is sizable. At just two wildlife clinics in California, rehabilitators treated 2,957 birds with fishing gear related injuries between 2002 and 2015. And these were just the birds that were found alive. And this is just at two, um, two clinics. So I did the math and this comes to 113 birds per year per clinic or roughly one fishing gear injured bird admitted every three days. Uh, many of these injuries and deaths are avoidable by properly disposing of fishing gear. So there's my horn grebe um, at Euclid Creek Reservation on the left hand side there. And then on the left, uh, buffalo heads, we have two males and a female just bobbing around on the lake. And then a, a close up of the injury, the unfortunate goal on the right. Uh, pink legs means either a herring, first year ring build, or maybe another Thayer's. <laughs> All right, so we walked back to the Wildwood Park area toward the picnic shelter to get a better view of Euclid Creek. We were standing near the Wildwood Picnic Shelter when we noticed a red-shouldered hawk sitting on a Cleveland Lakefront Viking sign near Neff Road, a residential street. The hawk was intently scanning the ground, ignoring passing traffic and dog walkers that were closer to it than we were, so we crept forward to get a better look. The hawk then dove for the ground and rose up again with prey in its talons, that it took to a nearby tree. The hawk finished its meal and then flew to the ground where another red shoulder hawk briefly joined it. They both took off for a nearby tree. The hawks were now backlit and did not present themselves for a good photo opportunity. And I, I did try to take pictures of, of those two hawks in the tree together, but it just, they did not turn out. But I do have this picture here of the red shoulder hawk on the sign. And you can see in the background, this is uh, somebody's roof. Uh, as it is a residential street. And then here's two more pictures of the hawk with its mouse or vole or whatever it has draped over um, the tree limb. And then two more pictures. And I, I love the picture on the left, how the, the feathers on the back just kind of got ruffled in the breeze that was going through. All right. So that was it for December 5th. On December 29th, I arrived solo at the southern section of Euclid Creek Reservation and parked at the Highland Picnic area near Highland Road. I was looking forward to the five mile round trip walk and just seeing some birds along the way. Most of the walk was uneventful for birds, but I did enjoy the scenery. About halfway down the two and a half mile stretch at the Welsh picnic area, I stumbled upon a flock of dark eyed juncos feeding on the ground. There was also a red bellied woodpecker in the same area. The red bellied woodpecker led me to a small patch of coniferous trees where I happened to notice some whitewash. Whitewash appears as white streaking at the base of a tree and often indicates the presence or recent presence of an owl. I excitedly checked the cluster of trees for an owl but could not find one. And so I included pictures of the whitewash um, so you could see what it looks like and, and even higher on the tree it was perched and you could see it running down. And then here on the left is the red-bellied woodpecker that I saw, and then a dark one of the dark-eyed juncos kind of flew up onto a branch. So I took a picture of that at Euclid Creek Reservation. All right, I didn't have any real luck with the location until I came to Kelly Picnic Area, almost at the very end of the two and a half mile stretch. Kelly Picnic Area sits back away from the trail, but the sight of a blue jay drew me into the area. 
I continued walking up the hill of Kelly Picnic area toward the creek, and as I crested the hill, a belted kingfisher came into view at eye level. We saw each other in that moment and froze, or at least I froze, and then, holding my breath, steadily raised my camera for a few hopeful shots. I have no idea why she paused and allowed me to take her portrait. Usually, belted kingfishers are so skittish. Of the few shots I took, however, the very first one turned out the best. How often does that happen? Um, not very often for me. <laughs> so it was very, very lucky shot that I got there of that Belted Kingfisher. And you can see that she is looking right at me. And there are uh, two pictures of the Blue Jay that drew me into the picnic area to begin with. All right, the kingfisher took off after only a few seconds and I continued onward. I got good looks at a downy woodpecker and a playful tufted titmouse as I circled the picnic area. There was also a massive flock of American robins in the area. I counted 36 individuals accompanied by about 10 dark eyed juncos. The flock of American robins took flight from the ground as I approached and I saw a flash of white take off with the dense crowd. But what was that? I whispered to myself as I tracked that white patch to a nearby branch, a northern flicker. Northern flickers have a characteristic white rump that displays in flight. They will often feed on the ground as their primary prey are ants, which makes sense how the bird got caught up with a flock of American robins, also ground feeders. Northern flickers are migratory birds, but they will stay in Ohio year round. And so on the right there, Downy Woodpecker at Euclid Creek Reservation. And there's the uh, playful tufted titmouse. It was just kind of hopping around in a bush at Euclid Creek Reservation. Uh, and I have six photos of American robins. There were so many and they um, kept hopping up into bushes, not just feeding on the ground, but hopping into bushes and feeding on berries that were in those bushes. And so here's one individual in a berry bush at Euclid Creek Reservation. And I believe this is a different individual. There were maybe like five or six in the same bush at a time. And then a third individual at Euclid Creek Reservation. And then here, Here's the male norther at Euclid Creek Reservation. I, I can tell it's a male because it has this mustache here. Uh, females don't have this field mark. And then as you can see here, like the wings are right. Can you see my mouse, everyone? You can see my mouse. Okay, good. That's helpful. All right, so um, the wings are folded over the white rump. You can see a little bit of white here and a little bit of white down here. When these wings come out, there's a big white patch. And that's what I noticed and tracked to this nearby branch. And then here's two more um, pictures of the Northern Flicker at Euclid Creek Reservation. And then here's my bird list, um, 19, unless if that one goal is a Thayer's and I had 20. <laughs> and that would have also Thayer's would have been um, a life bird for me. I didn't give myself a life reward because it's not confirmed, but you know, here's the hope in. All right, so notable species, I always highlight in red. These are notable to me. Your list uh, of notable species might look different. The red breasted merganser and the belted kingfisher, those were target species, so I always highlight those. Uh, the red shouldered hawk was really cool to see, and the northern flicker was a delight as well. So I highlighted those as my notable out of the 19. And then I just included another Another picture of the Euclid Creek and physical fitness trail at Euclid Creek Reservation. Just such beautiful scenery um, through that walk, even though there, there weren't many birds to see in, in many of the sections when I went on my visit, I, I still had a lovely time. All right, so next is Sean Missig. And I see Sean is online now. Welcome, Sean. Um, and I, I will go ahead and read your section unless you want to. All right, so. Go right ahead. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. All right. So Sean um, tallied a total of 14 bird species and visited the park three times. So he says, Euclid Creek is a location that I feel I should have visited before, but for some reason I had never made my way out there. Visiting new locations is one of my favorite perks of the virtual field trip program, and this one would be a pleasant surprise. My first visit was on 12-4, so you went the day before I did. 
Um, I used the address provided and was a little confused. Normally there are larger parking lots at or near the address, but this time I was taken to a management office that had a small parking lot. This made a lot of sense though, since there were many smaller parking lots and recreation areas throughout the parkway. After I turned around, I decided to park in a smaller lot that was in the middle of everything. Uh, when I got out of my truck, I heard birds chirping, so I felt I was in the right area. Turns out the birds didn't want their picture taken since they were across the street and didn't make their way to where I was at. Uh, since I wasn't having much luck with the wildlife, I decided to try to get down to the creek to capture some landscape shots. I did not find a safe way down, so I was limited with those shots as well. As I was making my way to the exit, I decided to pull off in another parking lot that I saw on my way in near Highland Road. This would be the best decision I made that day. And so here's one of the shots that uh, Sean managed to get of the creek. Very beautiful how the creek is just like sneaking back and forth. Um, All right, so I made my way down to the creek and started taking landscape shots. And when it happened, and, and then it happened. I heard a kingfisher calling. And when I turned, I watched it land on a tree branch in the area. I immediately started taking pictures and tried to get closer. This bird was smart though, and it knew that what I was doing. It flew away and I did not get any more shots of it. This was a great way to end my day though. Uh, with my knowledge from the last trip, I was able to improve my search area for the trip on 1212. I started my trip at the Highland Picnic area this time and made my way down to the creek to look for the kingfisher again. I didn't immediately find one, but did hear some off in the distance. So I waited on the bank of the creek under a down tree to try and hide so it would hopefully fly through. I waited for maybe 10 to 15 minutes and then one came screaming through like a jet. I was so awestruck that I didn't even pick up my camera. I stood there and watched it fly through the area. Midway through its flight, it noticed me and did a huge route change with some insane aerial stunts to avoid me, even going as far as flying through the trees on the other side of the creek. This was an amazing experience that I will not forget. So a picture uh, on the left-hand side there that Sean took of uh, Belta Kingfisher at Euclid Creek Reservation. And two more photos of the Belta Kingfisher at Euclid Creek Reservation taken by Sean Missig. And two more photos of Belta Kingfisher at Euclid Creek. He got really close to that one on the left. That's a great shot. Nice light too. All right, he says, I then made my way to the upper Highland picnic area and noticed a bench near the edge of the creek. I decided to sit there since this was where the kingfishers had been flying in from. I was glad that I did. It didn't take long, <clears throat> excuse me, for a kingfisher to announce its presence and land in a tree a little upstream. After a little time, the kingfisher flew towards me and it made a big flight change to avoid me as the other kingfisher did earlier. After taking a few photos of the kingfisher in its new spot, I decided to move on from that location. On my way back to the truck, I looked down at the creek from the bridge leading to the upper Highland Picnic area and I spotted a mink. It was crawling around some downed trees near the water and I was able to get a few good shots before it ran away. I have only ever seen these at Sandy Ridge before, so it was nice to see another one. And so there on the right hand side is a picture of the mink at Euclid Creek Reservation by Sean. For the next location, I made my way to the northern section of Euclid Creek near Lake Erie. It was a windy day, so I started out taking shots of gulls hovering in place and trying to land on the beach. After I had my fun there, I started after I had my fun there, I started to walk the path near the parking area of Wildwood Park. As I made my way toward the bridge, I saw a bald eagle soaring overhead. It was gliding easily with the wind and circling the area. I continued up the path to the sounds of a kingfisher nearby. Little did I know that it was that it would be so close and the closest I've ever been to one. As I stood on the bridge, it stayed in the tree not far in front of me and didn't seem to mind me being there. I stayed there for quite a while and I took many shots. It did dive once, which I missed, and changed branches a few times, but I was able to stick with it and get shots that I've never been able to get before. I continued to walk up the path along the entrance road and made my way down to the creek. I saw blue jays, cardinals, robins, and a few dark-eyed juncos all taking turns bathing in the creek. On the right-hand side, photo of rainbow gulls at Euclid Creek 
reservation. And then here on the left is the bald eagle that Sean saw flying overhead and uh, blue jay on the right at Euclid Creek Reservation. And then here's the belted kingfish on the left um, seeming to, to hop or, or jump up from a branch. And then an American robin on the right um, at Euclid Creek Reservation. 1219 was my final visit. I focused strictly on the area by Wildwood Park. This was also the coldest day of my visits and even the wildlife was feeling it. I first saw a few mallards in the creek waiting and sleeping. I also found many Canada geese waiting and sleeping in a little cove off of the creek. As I walked through that area, the only animals that seemed to be active were the squirrels. I found a few of them gnawing away at black walnuts they had found. The most interesting find on this day was a morning dove perched on a branch and puffed out to stay warm. The winds were strong coming off of Lake Erie and it caused the feathers on his chest to get folded up a little. The dove also had its membrane over its eye for further protection from the elements. There were a few kingfisher around, but they wanted nothing to do with me and flew off as soon as they saw me. Um, so on the right hand side, Mallard at Euclid Creek Reservation by Sean Missig. Here's another mallard on the left and that morning dove on the right with its, its feathers kind of being, you know, pushed about by the breeze. Um, these two birds taken in the Wildwood Park area at Euclid Creek Reservation. All right, when I walked up the entrance path, I noticed another short path that went through the woods. I decided to take this path and it paid off. As I started walking there, I noticed a larger bird in the distance flying through the trees. I was able to get a look at it and it was a red-tailed hawk. I snapped a few pictures from afar and this hawk was not happy about picture day. It flew off to a branch on the edge of the woods. I did see it again as I left the path, but it flew away deeper into the woods. Due to the colder temperatures, I cut this trip short and left after seeing the hawk. Euclid Creek is an interesting section of the Metro Park system that I would like to explore in more detail as the weather begins to change in the spring. The abundance of kingfisher also appeals to me since they are my favorite birds. And hopefully if they see me enough, I can be their favorite too. That's, that's wonderful. All right, so and on the right hand side, a photo of the red-tailed hawk at Euclid Creek Reservation. Uh, forest trail on the left and a really nice um, creek view on the right at Euclid Creek Reservation. And then a photo of red bellied woodpecker at Euclid Creek Reservation. Here's the bird list. Notable species include the Belted Kingfisher, which was the target, a uh, bald eagle, and the red tailed hawk. All wonderful birds to see. I'm going to take a quick sip of water. Oh yeah, and um, Nancy says, I like the way Sean's photos have the kingfisher framed by branches and leaves. Yeah, that's, that is very, very nice. A nice clear um, shot of the bird. Um, all right, so next up is Al Rand. Al Rand had 11 species and he visited the reservation on December 27th. He says, I made it to the Euclid Creek Reservation once on 12 27 2021. I started at the north end of the park after seeing a few trailheads there on the map. A bald eagle flew over before I even got out of my car. I continued past the gated off road up to the Upper Highland Reservable Shelter and found the Upper Highland Trail trailhead. Soon after, I encountered a large fallen tree and the trail fell off into the creek. Didn't see or hear a single bird, which I thought was odd since it was very wooded. On my way back down, I turned onto the old connector road, went up halfway and still no birds. Before returning to the parking lot, I went off trail to look over the side of the stone bridge and startled a belted kingfisher. It took off immediately along the creek with no fanfare, which was also odd because those birds almost always rattle loudly when in flight. I checked out some of the spruce trees near the fitness trail in hopes of finding an owl tucked into one of them. All I saw were two blue jays, Took the fitness trail south along the stream a little bit and came across some tufted tit mice, a red bellied woodpecker, and a downy woodpecker. Still no noise. I was convinced there was a predator in the area, but I was unable to locate one. And borrowed a picture um, from Sean Missig to include um, 
with Alvarez's story of a, a belted kingfisher at Euclid Creek Reservation. All right, he says, at this point, the rain picked up, so I took off. Before leaving, I took a look at the information kiosk to find that the trail I took was no longer managed. The map on the website must have been outdated. From there, I headed to Euclid Beach Park because the other trails went straight uphill and I wasn't about to tackle them in the rain. As I approached the beach, I saw juncos flitting between the trees, as were more blue jays. I came across six morning doves in the grass that quickly flew into the nearby pine trees. And like the other location, these birds were very noisy, so I'm convinced I missed something of interest at the other stop. I spent about 30 minutes in light rain on the pier, which provided nice looks at the lake. Numerous red-breasted mergansers streamed by, a few solo birds, a few in small groups of three to ten, but most were in three large flocks that moved west to east, hugging the surface of the lake. There were maybe 200 birds in total, and I wouldn't be surprised if there were more. In addition to the mergs, some ringbill gulls and mallards were lazing between the break wall and the beach. I feel the weather had something to do with the lack of activity, but it was still an adventure for me since I'd never been to that location before. Um, and another photo borrowed from Sean Missig of a ringbill gull at Euclid Creek Reservation. All right, here's Al's bird list, uh, notable species, the bald eagle, and then target species, red breast merganser and belted kingfisher. And then I um, included a picture I took of the tufted tit mouse at Euclid Creek Reservation. All right, Lisa Gerbic. Um, tallied 16 bird species over um, two trips. All right, so she says, December 26 was my first time at the Wildwood Park section of Euclid Creek Reservation. The day was cloudy and the temperature was in the mid to high 30s for my visit. I started by the lake and saw two horned grebes preening in the water. A pie bill grebe was busy diving. When the grebe came up, it looked like it had some feathers out of place. At home, when I looked at my photos on the computer, I saw that it had aquatic plants on its back, not wayward feathers. I crossed the bridge towards the Cleveland sign. Along the creek, I noticed an orange and white cat sitting on the rocks. I spotted a tree with sapsucker holes in its bark. Although I did not see a sapsucker crossing the river again, I spotted a belt of kingfisher sitting quietly on a branch. Before I left, I decided to also walk along the stream and wetlands area. There was a large flock of European starlings feeding in the grass. I spied evidence of a beaver along the creek. Finally, a group of dark-eyed juncos were flying among the bushes and the trees at the end of my trip. And there is a picture of a belted kingfisher at Euclid Creek Reservation by Lisa Gerbeck. Here are um, Two Horn Greaves at Euclid Creek Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. And I only saw one on my visit. I'm glad that there were two for her. And Piedville Grebe on the left. And Piedville has got to be my favorite grebe. They are just so cute. And then a Mallard on the right at Euclid Creek Reservation by Lisa. And then a cat sitting on the rocks on the left. And, you know, I love cats. I don't like to see them out in the wild. Um, they're a big threat to birds, but um, that is a really cute cat. I do have two, two cats myself. Um, and then the sap sucker holes in the bark on the right at Euclid Creek Reservation. You can see all those tiny holes just like in a line there. And finally, beaver activity at Euclid Creek Reservation by Lisa Gerbeck. So notable species in her list, red-breasted merganser was the target. The pied bull grebe is really cute, nice seeing horn, horn grebes. And then the belt of kingfisher was the other target species. All right, and that um, wraps up the presentation. So a uh, Big thank you to Sean Missig, Al Rand, and Lisa Gerbic for participating, going out to the reservation, um, you know, sharing their stories and their photos. And then a huge thank you to Cleveland Metro Parks for Euclid Creek Reservation. So I usually provide the address and a, a little bit about how to get to each location. 
Um, usually it's not a paragraph, but uh, this is what I'm going to write about it. So this, the address provided on the Cleveland Metro Parks website for the southern section is 850 Euclid Creek Parkway. However, this will get you almost there, which I think, Sean, um, you mentioned you found that to be the case too. Um, it'll get you almost there, but actually passes Metro Park Drive if you're coming from I-90, where you can access the physical fitness trail. So keep your eyes open for the Euclid Creek Reservation signage on Highland Road. Um, because that address will take you past that sign over a bridge. And um, it actually wanted to, me to take a right at the bridge <laughs> with my GPS. Um, so just study a map before you go. Um, make sure you know where you're going. The, the, the GPS got me almost there. I had to kind of figure it out from there. Um, so to access the northern section, uh, Wildwood Drive, Cleveland, Ohio works in Google Maps or try one of the destinations in your GPS, Euclid Beach Park, Villa Angela Park, and Wildwood Park. Um, sometimes you can put like a, a destination um, like that in your GPS. And please visit wcautoma.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. Um, this month, the month of January, we are going out to West Creek Reservation in Parma. Um, looking for hawks. So any any hawk, um, red tail, red shoulder, you know, whatever. Um, so hopefully there are lots of hawks out there to see. Uh, lots of something to see would be great. I have not made my trip out yet, uh, but I plan to do so very soon. And with that, I would like to open up um, for discussion. So feel free to take yourselves off mute, or if you want, you can write in the chat. I will monitor the chat as well. So any questions, comments, thoughts about what you've seen? Any and any thoughts about the gall? I think it's a beautiful gall, but I Thank can't you. say what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I do like galls though, all all the kinds. So yeah, to me, it, great, great chats. Thank you. Yeah, and it's just you know, I wanted to share my my journey looking for that identification. Um, goals I'm finding can be challenging just because there there are, first of all there are so many goals and then they look different depending on if it's winter or summer and if it's their first winter, their second winter or third winter they may, may have like differences within the same species. So, and a lot of the goals look similar to each other. So it's it's a, a challenge and I, I have to like challenges. So um, I'm gonna keep working on that picture and see what I can come up with. Yeah, and the Facebook group that you said submitted it to where you did get some replies, um, that was, I, I had seen it there and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, a gulk. <laughs> <I'm going away. laughs> yeah, but it, you actually made me look a little bit more and I did look through some resources, but again, goals are tough. Difficult. And, yeah. Uh, and, you know, they travel so far. I mean, you mm -hmm. could have a West Coast species. You could have things from Europe wind up here in Ohio. Um, had Lake Erie been frozen for the Christmas bird count, you know, who knows what we would have had here. So um, it just, uh, it, they're, they're amazing. And mm -hmm. maybe you'll, hopefully you'll get us some answers from that goal uh, group that you've might post them too. Yeah, I think I am going to post it there and ask the question. And I, if I get anywhere, I will follow up on it um, next month's call. Like before yeah. we dive into the presentation, I'll, I'll let you know what I was able to find. Yeah, I hope I hope they just don't answer. Hey, it's a blah. A ask them um, how did you tell? What, I what definitely you will. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of how I phrase the question to the Good. ABA site. Is like I would appreciate any details or something like that. I, I wanted yeah. details, and so that right, that last right. comment was really thorough with with why he or she thought it was uh, a Thayer's goal. But yeah. I just I don't. It's hard because you don't know any of those people and what their expertise are, and they I think all of them led with I think. <laughs> And not that yeah. they were sure, so I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to put Thayer's in eBird, and then it's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've left that out of eBird for now too. And Gloria, thank you. She says they are all very beautiful photos of the birds, especially the belted kingfisher. So yeah, we have um, lots of talented 
uh, photographers that participate in this program and Sean and Lisa have been two of the um, the best ones and the most consistent with with participating so very thankful for their contributions. Put yourself on that list too <laughs> Michelle your pictures you know, are funny. great as well. I never um, like you see I'm not here because it feels weird thanking myself. <laughs> well I That's can't I get enough listen. photos of, of robins in the winter time I mean that is mm -hmm. a verb. That is a verb. Yeah, it, beautiful, definitely beautiful. And and they're they're really they're they're photogenic. They don't they're not super fast, and they'll sit there and they'll pick at berries. And so they're they're really kind of easy to focus on. And and they do pop with their their red breast. Um, they do pop against snow and and other more neutral backgrounds. So you see the details too, like the spotting mm -hmm. around the eye and the throat with the striping mm -hmm. on it, and oh. I don't know. I can't get enough of them. <laughs> I'll make sure I tag you in all the Robin photos I take <laughs> this winter so you can see them. Yeah, finally I'll say enough. <laughs> like I hate Robins now. Yeah. <laughs> all right, any other um, thoughts? I did want to comment on uh, this month's location and okay. um, I absolutely love West Creek. It's amazing. I have seen hawks both yes. times I've been there. Excellent. And the first time I went there, I was walking way back in one of the trails and I started to hear a noise and I went, that sounds an awfully lot like a kingfisher. And you would know. And That's your favorite yeah, bird. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite bird. So like, I should know this and I'm going, okay, Maybe I'm just hearing things that I walked a little further. I heard it again. I kept hearing it, but couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. I went back again this past weekend and I heard it again. And I sat there and I thought, am I going crazy? This is <laughs> insane. And then I found it. Oh, that's a great so, story. <laughs> yeah. So there is a kingfisher way back and it is very smart because the section of the creek in the back that it is in is a section that you really cannot get to uh, mm -hmm. without having to kind of trample your own path which I'm not a big fan of so right. I stuck to the main path and thankfully found it when it kind of reached the uh, the outskirts of where it was at so Excellent. thankfully I have a really long lens that I mm -hmm. can get and it's not the best photo but it's going to work because you can tell Excellent. it's there. Yay. That's a good story. And I'm glad you had success finding target species. That's the one thing I kind of worry about <laughs> when I, when I pick the target species for the location is, you know, I, I want at least one person to find it. Um, I always check eBird to see what historically has been sighted in the area at certain times of year. But, you know, sometimes, you know, the birds, they don't check eBird. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know they're supposed to be there. So i um, always happy. Like uh, there was one we had recently, the November field trip. I thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun to pick a location where you could see wild turkey? So I did. And then not, no one saw one. <laughs> but that's what happens sometimes. Oh, Gloria says, it makes me miss the Southern California Malibu Lagoon, which is where we used to bird every month. I have never been there, but if I ever go out to California, I will definitely have that on my list to check out. Yeah, definitely go there. Excellent. I think so, that's um, a little different from California, Southern California, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. Definitely. Um, a variety of hummingbirds in Southern California, right? What's that? You have a variety. There's a variety of hummingbirds in Southern California. Oh yeah, we yeah. have Annas, we have Allens. Mm -hmm. Um, the what's the purple one? I'm unfamiliar. I, you know, I'm reading a book about hummingbirds, um, but there aren't pictures, <laughs> so oh. it's hard. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot. There's the, the there's Allens, the Annas. Yeah, um, there's a lot of hummingbirds. Mm -hmm. All right, hey, Sean. Nancy. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Go ahead, Sean. Okay, yes. Uh, yes, Nancy. Yes. I. I just wanted to confirm date and time for the, um, which we call it the Tremont Walk this month. Is that on the 22nd at nine? 
twenty second yes. at nine. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Excellent. And then, Sean, I was going to ask you. You had you had said that you had some trouble um, getting to the the location that the, the when you pulled in the the GPS might not have taken you to the right place or something. Um, it, were, were, well, were you it, going to the upper to, to the um, the Highland? parkway yeah the okay the highland it, it did take me off of 90 and it got okay. me up to highland and had me turn right into the parkway off of highland um and then my gps said that that address was it was a very small management office on the right hand side mm, uh probably okay. halfway up that section so it, it was still okay. I mean, I could have parked there and walked, but I decided to park in the other areas um, that were closer to the actual uh, physical fitness trail. And then the Highland okay. parking area was the one that I had most success at. Um, okay. For the northern section by the lake, I had no problem. I just searched Wildwood Park. And yeah, was that was go. pretty easy for me too. Okay, excellent. All right, any other comments? Thank you, that was beautiful. Excellent, well, thank you for joining us, Gloria. And we do this every month. Um, how did you find out about this? Did you receive an email or did you look on Eventbrite? No, I just looked on the website. The website, okay. Yeah. So yeah, we have this every month and you're welcome to join us You know, anytime. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening and hopefully thank I will you. see you all next month. Thank right. you everybody and thanks for your wonderful narratives and pictures. Yeah, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Thanks, bye.